Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Ceph and how to restore a Ceph node when you have failed to upgrade it. And this is a little bit of a story that starts with that I thought that, okay, I have a bunch of Ceph node behind me and these nodes in, is in a cluster and upgrade one of them would not be that much of a hassle. And a couple of months ago, the new Debian release came out Bullseye. So I thought I would upgrade from Buster to Bullseye. And when I actually had upgraded it, I realized that, oh, I forgot to change up the list for the uh, Ceph packages. So I went in and updated to Bullseye, did an apt update and apt up upgrade, and it told me that there were no packages for Bullseye. All the services on that host did not work, and I saw before me that, oh no, I had to in reinstall uh, everything, and then probably the OSD will not be in sync, so uh, I would spend a week or something to actually sync everything up. This was my process. Uh, it's today the 17th of September, important, uh, <laughs> later on, but um, I started this process and I will switch over to my screen here. So I made a script of everything that I did and I will do a better write up of this and uh, put a link in the video description so you can read this as well with a couple more uh, descriptions to everything. So the first thing I did was set the Ceph cluster into a no out, no rebalance mode because I didn't want it to actually start working on anything while I was doing maintenance because I still thought that there might be a chance that I actually can rectify this, but I don't know. Uh, the next part was actually to do, pick out the, uh, the host, put an USB stick into it and reinstall Debian Buster because you can't go back from a bullseye to a Buster, you can only upgrade. So I had to do a fully reinstall and that was a little bit uh, heartening because I needed to plug out the hard drive that was the Ceph hard drive, the OSD, because I wasn't really sure how to actually get it installed correctly. Uh, it wanted to put the startup boot sector on that drive, which never worked. So I had to pull it out and do a reinstall without that drive, but that worked. So now I had a clean reinstall of Debian. Then I did an apt upgrade uh, update. So I had the newest packages, always good to do that. So you know that you don't have any extra things that will be installed and might cause conflicts before you do upgrades. And then I um, did uh, add all the keys for Ceph, of course, and edit the Ceph list and add the actual listing of the Ceph packages so we know where to download those. I did an upgrade and then installed Ceph and Ceph Common so I have all the packages needed to actually run my Ceph cluster. I also knew that I wanted to have this latest smartphone tools so I went in and added the Buster Buck uh, porch into source list and updated and installed the new Smartmon tools. And after that, I did a restart in order to have all the packages up and running in a good manner on the host. Uh, I went into my uh, Ceph uh, etc directory, the configuration directory, and copied over the configuration from another host with some changes in order to have the right host ID and so on, but pretty much kept it as it was, and then copied over the admin key so I can actually do maintenance on this server as well. And next up, I wanted to set up the monitor. So I have a monitor, a manager, an MSD, and an OSD on all hosts. So I created the directory for the monitor, I got the actual key used for monitors, I got the map for the monitors, so this is the map where all the OSDs are and, and so on, what kind of sharing is done between them. 
so the hard disk map and then I uh, set up a new monitor, created a file system for that using the monitor map and the keyring and then I needed to go in and change the user privileges for that monitor directory uh, or else it would not start up because if you are the wrong user it can't actually read it when you start the service. I checked the status of the service to see that it actually were there and then started it up, checked that it started correctly and enabled it. And I had to do this a couple of different times because I forgot some steps and so on, but I actually got it to work. Um, there might be required to do an extra reboot if things doesn't really work uh, or is set up correctly, but I got to work pretty easily. Um, next up, I, uh, I got the manager uh, credentials, so this is create or get, so it actually got those credentials because I already had them, and then I created a, a directory, and in that directory I copied the keyring into that directory. I could have just um, piped that <laughs> keyring from the first command here into that directory but I didn't do that and then I set the, the permissions again and again started the service and enabled the service so now I have the monitor and the manager and those don't those are pretty easy because the uh, monitor is just getting into the quorum and get all the information from the rest of the cluster it's mostly in memory and the manager is just a GUI so that's no problem the same goes for the MDS, I made a directory, got the, uh, the uh, credentials and here you see I pipe it directly into the keyring and then create the uh, uh, write permissions and started that service as well. So now I have all the services that are working in memory up and running and those I were not really that stressed out about because that would be pretty easy. But now comes the hard part, the actual OSD. And here I thought I might need, uh, lose the date on that OSD and needed to rebuild it. So I created a directory for this OSD. It's number three uh, because I have four hosts and this is node five for some reason. But created this directory and I got the authentication for the OSD and put that into the keyring and set the permissions. Next up, I were able to do a Ceph volume LVM list to list the LVM volume that I created for this Ceph cluster. And it told me that it had a lot of different things, but it also had the ID3. So this hard drive already had all the information needed to get it activated and running again. So did a Ceph volume LVM activate all that started the service and made the OSD available with the old data without no extra work on my part. So it just worked, which was so nice and so so relieving that I just were up and running again, no rebuild, no switching around of data and so on. So I enabled that service and everything was good. And then I set my cluster to no out and no uh, rebalance. So now I <laughs> unset those variables, of course. So now I had a working cluster again. All nodes were back to buster. Everything worked as intended. And I thought, oh, yeah, that was really scary to upgrade to Bullseye, don't have the packages, and then have to downgrade. And it actually worked finally good. Uh, and then I checked my <laughs> mailbox. So I got a mail from the Ceph user list and they said the new version has released 16.2.6 and I read through the notes there was a, a lot of nice bug fixes and so on as new, some new extra features but nothing really major mostly bug fixes and the last line on this email was this version is the first version built for bullseye so now i have packages for bullseye and i actually have upgraded that 
host to Bullseye with the new packages. So this was my little story today. I hope that you found this interesting, perhaps funny, and perhaps you learned something today. Uh, I hope that you like this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.